Okay, so, one thing about me. I love my Hero Academia, like properly love. My Twitter account, which you should follow by the way, is mostly dedicated to it. I begged my family for my Hero merch on Christmas, I got my best friends into watching the anime, and then I got one of them and my other friend to pick up the manga. I read the manga religiously every week, and if you're caught up, DM me so we can cry about 290 together. I have head cannons, I have ships, and we'll talk about those later. It's the show I play in the background when I'm going about my daily little tasks. It just brings me a lot of comfort. So I've been around the fandom circles, I've observed some of the ship wars, I've saved a lot of fan art, consumed a lot of fan fiction, so maybe you'll be surprised to know that I've only been a fan of Hiroaka for about eight months. A little backstory. Anime has always been a well-beloved form of entertainment and escapism in my life. I remember being three years old and jumping in front of the TV at 5pm and recording full episodes of Digimon and Sailor Moon on my shoddy little VHS player. I even forced my mother to make me a whole Sailor Moon costume from scratch for Carnaval when I was four. I got serious, as serious as you can get about silly cartoons about it at age 11 up until I was 14. I went to conventions, I dreamed about cosplaying one day, and then I just fell from it. But then, shock horror, in January of this year I went through a bad breakup, like traumatic character building stuff. And as we all do when we need comfort, I went back to the stuff that made me happy when I was younger. And suddenly, my weep phase was back in full force. My Hero was one of the first shows I watched back then, and it quickly became my favorite. So take my opinion with a grain of salt, I'm very subjective about it, and I also haven't been back for too long. But I think this distance gives me a little bit of perspective into the subject. It is a fact that my Hero fandom has a bad, bad reputation. On Twitter, whenever you see a worst anime fandoms thread, my Hero is always the first or second tweet. And there are many reasons for this. The main concern people seem to have are excessive and aggressive shippers, especially of gay pairings, bullying the creator, and just general annoyingness. In this video, I'm going to cover all three. And if you're a My Hero fandom hater, maybe, just maybe, I'll try to change your opinion a little bit. Offender number one, aggressive shippers. All fandoms have shippers. I was raised on Tumblr fan culture, so I remember seeing everything from your run-of-the-mill Dr. X Rose shippers, to Hetalia Brain Rot, to John Locke, to full Wincest and Wastest degeneracy. And most iconic of all, the Onesler. And let's not even talk about Destiel. <laughs> Personally, my favorite brand of shipping was Wolfstar and Mion Sonazaki X Keichi Mai Bada fanfiction, but I digress. I would even say that shipping is one of the backbones of fandom culture. Like it or not, a great deal of fan art and most fanfiction are created around ships. Whether it canon or not, they generate a lot of interaction and conversation. They get people excited and invested about their favorite characters. They provide escapism and a creative outlet. So why are my hero shippers so hated? What makes them different from Rem and Subaru enthusiasts or Yato X Hiori aficionados? I think this is going to turn off a lot of people from this video, but I truly do think that, at least in part, it lies in casual and internalized homophobia. Phantom culture is drowning in gay ships. I have mentioned a few already, such as John Locke, John Watson and Sherlock Holmes, Wolfstar, Remus Lupin and Sirius Black, Ereri, Eren Yeager and Captain Levi. Yikes! <laughs> I could make a whole separate video about why fandoms like gay ships so much, and I'm probably going to do that soon, so stay tuned. Back to topic, though. My Hero Academia is no stranger to that, but they're not the only ones at all. And I would even say that in terms of the sheer amount of gay ships, they're not even in the top three. Let's take a look at the Haikyuu fandom for a bit. Better yet, let's try to count the gay ships. We have Noya and Asahi, Noya and Tanaka, Oikawa and Iwaizumi, Suge and Daichi, Uchiji and Tendo, Bokuto and Akashi, Hinata, and the entire male cast of the show. And that's already 12, and there's even more. But you don't see the kind of hatred that is directed at the My Hero fandom being thrown at Haikyuu. And I think the main reason for that, and attention, I'm generalizing a lot here, is because unlike in the beginning of Haikyuu, at this point the majority of the Haikyuu fandom is female, at least in the West. However, I'd say that the My Hero Academia fandom is probably split in the middle in terms of gender distribution, and why is this relevant? To start with, gay ships are usually supported either by female fans or gay men. It makes sense, you have a ship because you like their dynamic, but many times also because you are probably attracted to one or even both characters. So if you're the majority in the community, the fans of the show are not likely to turn against you, they're just like you after all. Secondly, and I know this is going to be a hot take and I'm gonna be cancelled for it, but 
There is and has been, although it's a little better now, a homophobia and racism problem within the male otaku community. Just a few weeks ago, we had the Annie Twitter KKK issue, where a group chat self-titled as Annie Twitter KKK went around doxing, harassing, and targeting black Twitter users and cosplayers. It got so bad that a lot of people were forced to deactivate or go private. I'll leave a link for Otaku Kelsey's video about homophobia in the anime community. She's a wonderful creator and super nice, so please make sure to drop by her channel and give her some love. As you can see, this type of comment is just scratching the surface of a wider issue in the community. It's not uncommon to find all sorts of homophobic vitriol or distasteful jokes all over Twitter and Reddit. There are only 92 shonen eye shows, 75 shoujo eye shows, 44 yaoi films, and 39 yuri films. Well, for you, there's 385 harem anime, 753 ecchi anime, and 1,315 hentai films. As Kelsey mentions in her video, the amount of gay content in anime compared to straight content is minuscule. You can see why so many people are desperate to consume this type of content, and in many cases, they are LGBT people looking for a representation. Anime being a nerdy hobby, many of us felt alienated and sometimes even ostracized in school and among our social circles and alienation is always the first step towards radicalization. I think this is why so many people with more conservative or frankly bigoted values end up gravitating towards anime. As a female anime fan, I can't tell you the amount of times my opinion on something has been ignored or mocked just because I'm a girl. And I know it's a common experience for other female aligned anime fans to be talked over or have their status as a fan questioned just because they identify as a woman. I can't tell you the amount of times I've seen people say that just just the fact that people headcanon two characters as LGBT plus ruins a show for them, or that quit a show because there are gay scenes or even just gay subtext. Shows like Yuri on Ice get reduced to, oh there's a gay couple, and get labeled as yaoi when Yuri on Ice is first and foremost a sports anime. The relationship is there, of course, but it's never the most important part. There is a lot you can critique about Yuri on Ice, but if the sole reason you don't watch it is because it has a gay romance, and then you go and watch Sword Art Online with no complaints about the straight pairing, then I'm sorry to tell you, pal, but your bias is showing. For example, if you look up the discussion forum for the first episode of Haruchika on my anime list, a show where the two main characters, a boy and a girl, have a crush on their male teacher, you'll find comments such as, I'm just hoping that this doesn't go the route I heard that it's gonna go, that is, that the MCs are in love with the teacher and that Haruta is gay and it has no interest in Chika. The whole idea of traps and are you gay if you're into traps is a great illustration of the homophobia and transphobia that are deeply ingrained into weeb culture, if you want to call it great. If you closely pay attention to the type of people that will shit on Hiroaka fans for their male gay ships, these are the same type of guys that will look up Yao Momo x Jiro Dojins or that gave Sakura Trick a 9 on my anime list. You hardly ever see any uproar over gay female pairings. What you do see a lot of though is over sexualized fan art of them or very violent and explicit fan fiction. But you hardly ever see anyone complaining about this, and if you do, they're shut down pretty quickly. And I'm not saying that consuming this type of fan art or fan fiction is wrong, I'm just saying that the double standard is clearly present in this situation. Homophobic men in the My Hero fandom feel threatened by the gay shippers because it bothers them to see their favorite male characters represented in a way that is offensive to them and their worldview. And I'm not trying to pull an all men are trash move, I very much disagree with that. However, it is an objective fact that within the homophobic weep population, the majority are men. So if you're not homophobic, please don't feel threatened, this is not about you. Nonetheless, I don't mean to say that homophobia is the only reason why Hiroaka shippers are so looked down upon. I have experienced some pretty toxic shippers myself. Specifically, I've seen absurd ship wars between Kiribakus and Bakudekus, so that's people who ship Kirishima from My Hero Academia, with Bakugo from My Hero Academia, and then Midoriya from My Hero Academia, and Bakugo from My Hero Academia. In fact, just a few weeks ago, one of the most prominent Kiribaku Twitter users was mass reported to the point of suspension. There is a huge problem with shippers who are so dedicated to their pairings that they go to the extent of completely deleting someone from the internet over two fictional characters that will never be canon, much to my dismay. I've also seen pretty disgusting ships like Aizawa and Su or All Might and Midoriya. However, these are definitely a minority, and these things happen in virtually every single fandom with a moderate to large following. And I think it's safe to say that at the moment, 
My Hero Academia is currently the modern shonen with the biggest active fan base, excluding shows like One Piece. With a fandom as large as the My Hero fandom, you're just bound to find it more often. Offender numero dos, bullying Horikoshi over ships, debunked. So there was a rumor running around that some shippers had sent Horikoshi death threats over him not canonizing their favorite ships. And although this has happened, it wasn't directed at Horikoshi, and it wasn't in the My Hero fandom at all. I haven't watched or read Tokyo Ghoul myself, I do love Unravel to death though. So I low-key spoil myself researching for this video, you can thank me later. Essentially, minor spoiler alert, a lot of people ship the main character Kaneki with his best friend Hide. However, in chapter 125 of the manga, we discover that Kaneki has sex with a female character he was also heavily shipped with. And as we all know, if there's a ship war to be had, it will absolutely happen and it will be ugly. In this specific case, it ended up with Sui Ishida, the mangaka, getting death threats by rabbit fans who called for him to commit suicide and filmed and photographed themselves burning copies of the manga. Very 1999 fundamentalist Christians in America burning Harry Potter books, isn't it? Even if Horikoshi wasn't on the receiving end of this specific death threat, he has received a lot of hate. However, he isn't the first one, nor will he be the last one. If you or your work get popular, you are bound to get haters. I would even say that haters are guaranteed while fans may not be. Every single popular mangaka, they've all received hate, and although we shouldn't justify it, we also can't pin it solely on one fandom and call it toxic over it. Offender number three, annoying. Yes, the My Hero fandom is annoying. I agree, I see it every day, on Twitter, on TikTok, on Instagram. It's annoying, it's cringy, it's ridiculous. And you want to know why? Because it's full of 14 year olds. And you know why that is? because it's a shonen. Its target audience are teenagers and young adults, and as a young adult myself who has never really grown out of her teenage years, I can guarantee you this is the most annoying demographic there is. If a show has a young viewership, of course the fan base is going to be annoying and overbearing. These are kids we are talking about. They haven't learned the social boundaries and cues that older people have. They don't have enough real life experience to recognize their behavior as unwanted or bothersome, and they shouldn't have to. Being stupid and cringy in fandom spaces when you are a kid is a rite of passage of the modern nerd. I went through it, you watching this video probably did it too. Some of us did it on Tumblr and Reddit such as myself, others fled to the dark abyss that is 4chan. You probably had an emo phase and called your art way a small bean. I sure did. Or you broke into your favorite choreography of a Vocaloid song in the middle of your middle school. It's fine. We've gone through it, survived, and hopefully become more well-adjusted people. Furthermore, as I have discussed earlier, My Hero Academia has a huge, and I mean huge, fan base. Volume 21 of the manga sold almost 600,000 copies. That is a lot. And it's easy to assume that for every manga reader, there are probably two anime only, so you did the math on that. God knows I can't, I'm a literature BA, if you couldn't tell. In conclusion, just let the kids have fun. And also, I think it's safe to assume that it's not just the My Hero Academia fandom that is toxic, but the anime fandom in general is pretty toxic. And so we have reached the end of this modest exploration of the quote-unquote alleged toxicity of the My Hero fandom. I honestly don't know how long this ended up being, but my script had almost 3,000 words, so... Mm -hmm. That's more effort than I put into my uni essays. So I'm sorry for how much I ramble, I'm just really interested in this topic. All my social media will be linked down below, as well as the resources I used for this video. I am very active on Twitter and Mal, and I do go on Instagram quite a bit, so be sure to check them out. You can follow me on Twitter at UndeadToya, Instagram at UndeadTilda, TikTok at UndeadTilda, and my animalist at, you guessed it, UndeadTilda. Also, please don't take my word as gospel. I'm not a scholar in this subject by any means. I'm just interested in it, and these were my opinions. If you have different opinions, please write them down in the comments. I am so curious to know what you think. I'm also sorry for how low quality this ended up being. I'm literally filming this on my phone, propped up in a pile of books, in the backyard, editing on a cracked software and writing in between online lessons. Hopefully, if I continue doing videos, they'll get a little better. Please feel free to continue the discussion in the comments and give me all the feedback I can possibly get. I really want to improve. Also, if you have any video suggestions or recommendations, please leave them in the comments below. Many thanks to Otako Kelsey for letting me use her video, and a special thanks to my best friends for proofreading my script, getting me some editing software on my hands, and just putting up with my deranged weeb ramblings. I'll hopefully be back soon with a video about the history of gay ships in anime and media in general. 
and I'm also planning to do a review of the first 100 chapters of One Piece since I'm reading that for the first time with no spoilers. And so the question I'll leave with you today is, did I change your mind about the My Hero fandom? Let me know in the comments. Bye-bye! Okay, so...